Most people assume that being rich means you have a million dollars in your bank account. But that's not what actual rich people are working for. I'll show you. When you hear that Mark Zuckerberg made $28 billion this morning, that doesn't mean that he woke up with billions of dollars in his Chase account. And when you hear that Elon Musk's wealth plunged by $40 billion, that doesn't mean that he needs to use buy now, pay later to fund his Uber Eats. Real wealth is built through your investments. It's built through your assets. It's not built through your salary. And if you don't believe me, take a look at this. In 2022, Mark Zuckerberg's salary was $1. But in case you were wondering, no, he is not broke. See, Mark Zuckerberg's wealth didn't come from his salary, it came from his investments. It came from his asset because he owns the Meta company, the company that he started, and Meta is worth around $1.3 trillion today. See, you gotta remember, Mark Zuckerberg is an employee at Meta because he's the CEO of the company, but he's also an investor in the company. Now, he doesn't own the entire company because he needed other people's money in order to fund the company to grow it because Meta, or Facebook back then, was pre-revenue for seven years. Not pre-profit, pre-revenue. That means after Mark Zuckerberg created this Facebook company, it went for seven years without generating a dollar in any revenue. And when you're creating a company and you have employees and you have expenses and you have costs and you're not making any money, you're not going to be in business very long unless you have external sources of funding. Uh, there are two ways that you can get this external money. You can get this money in the form of debt or you can get this money in the form of equity investments from other shareholders. Now, Mark Zuckerberg needed to get money from other people, other angel investors, other venture capital investors. And so in order to grow his company and run it, especially when you're not making any money, when you're pre-revenue for seven years, he had to give up a piece of this company. As of today, Mark Zuckerberg owns about 13.5% of his company. So let's do some simple math. If we assume that Meta is worth $1.3 trillion, a nice round number, and Mark Zuckerberg owns 13.5% of this asset, that means that Mark Zuckerberg owns a $169 billion share in the Meta company. So when Mark Zuckerberg works for $1, that's his salary as the employee, as the CEO of the company. But that's not the only way he's getting paid. Because yeah, maybe he could pay himself a million dollars or two million dollars or ten million dollars. But the real wealth that he's getting isn't through working in the company, it's through owning the company. Now, of course, he kind of has that double benefit because when he works in the company, he's still benefiting his ownership and he's a smart person. And because he knows how to grow the company, he knows how to build the company. Well, now, as he grows the company, as the company makes more money, his ownership, his investment in Meta also becomes more valuable. And he's not alone. Elon Musk actually got paid a smaller salary than Mark Zuckerberg because for years, Elon Musk went with a zero dollar salary working at Tesla. Instead of getting paid with a cash salary, Elon Musk was getting paid with stock options. These stock options essentially say that you, Elon Musk, as an employee in this company, have the option to purchase shares, purchase ownership in the Tesla stock at $23 a share. That means that if the Tesla stock goes up to $173 a share, Elon Musk makes $150 of profit per stock option that he chooses to exercise. So how many shares did he get? As of 2023, it was a little over 411 million shares of Tesla. Now you can do the math. 411 million times $150, let's just say a profit per share, and that's a lot of wealth. But again, this isn't cash in his bank account, this is the value of his investments, and the only way he can actually get that cash is if he pulls out debt against this investment, kind of like a cash out refinance, or if he sells some of this investment. Now, this might just be the attorney in me talking, but I kind of feel the need to also tell you this, that when you don't get paid a salary, when you get paid with this ownership in this company, because Mark Zuckerberg created Meta, Elon Musk has his ownership in this company, when the value of investment goes up, you don't actually pay taxes. You pay taxes when you get an income. So when you hear that Mark Zuckerberg's wealth grew by $40 billion, that Elon Musk's wealth grew by $100 billion, these are not taxable events because you only pay taxes when you have an income. And what Elon Musk did was he would use debt to pull cash out of his investments. If he has $100 million worth of assets and he needs $10 million to buy a car and buy a home and buy some food, well, he could use a loan to pull this cash out and that's tax-free. Kind of like when you go out and do a cash out refinance. That's a tax free event because you pay taxes when you have an income. If Elon Musk or Mark Zuckerberg sell their stocks, now that's a taxable event. You have an income, but then you pay taxes. When you have $0 in salary or $1 in salary, you don't really pay any taxes because you don't really have an income. 
Which now brings me to the point where you're probably thinking, Jaspreet, that's cool and all, but I'm not Elon Musk, and I'm not Mark Zuckerberg, so how does any of this apply to me? Well, these principles can also be used by you, even if you don't plan to go out and create the next Tesla or the next Meta. By the way, if you're a money nerd and you want to stay up to date on what's happening in the financial news, when it's happening, that way you're on top of the news, I created a free newsletter called Market Briefs to help you with that. It's a free and easy way for you to stay up to date on what's happening in things like the economy, the housing market, the stock market, crypto, and the global economy into a fun, witty, and easy to read newsletter. I promise you're going to love reading Market Briefs. And if you don't, well, you can unsubscribe at any time because it's completely free. So if you haven't joined Market Briefs yet, I highly encourage you to do so. It's completely free and I got the link for you down in the description below where you can go to briefs.co slash market. That's briefs.co slash market. There are three principles that I want you to understand from what we just discussed with Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg. Number one is that wealth is built through your investments, not your salary. Number two is you need to have a long-term vision and number three is you want to understand the difference between diversification and putting your eggs in one basket. So let's start with number one, that wealth is built through your investments and your assets, not your salary. And what I want you to understand here is you don't have to go out and create the next Meta or the next Tesla to kind of take advantage of the same things that Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk did. Because if we take a look at the Meta company, Meta is worth $1.3 trillion, but Mark Zuckerberg only owns 13.5% of that, which means you also have 86.5% of this company owned by other investors. And if it's worth $1.3 trillion, Mark Zuckerberg only owns less than 200 billions of that, which means you have $1.1 trillion of wealth owned by other investors. So you can either build the asset or you can buy the asset. Now, building the asset gives you the opportunity for infinite returns because you can start a company with next to nothing and turn it into a trillion dollar company if you build the next Meta or if you build the next Tesla. Although you don't have to build a trillion dollar company or even a billion dollar company to build a lot of wealth, but it's a lot of risk involved with building a business. However, if you build it, you start with 100% ownership because it's a company that you created. And then as you get investors, if you get investors, now you're diluting some of your ownership but you start with ownership without having to invest any money into it because now you're starting the company. Now, of course, to grow the company, you will probably need some money and the amount of money you invest is gonna depend on what the company is, but you start with 100% ownership and then you start diluting it. When you buy the ownership, you start with 0% ownership and then you have to start increasing it by the amount of money that you invest. And there are a lot of different ways that you can invest your money. I mean, you can invest your money into the stock market through the different companies. You can invest your money into funds, ETFs, index funds, mutual funds to get exposure to a broad basket of companies in the stock market. You can invest your money into real estate. You can invest your money into startups. Now, you can be an angel investor or a venture capital investor that's looking for the next startup that's gonna be the next Meta or Tesla. Again, more risk risk comes with more potential return. But in any case, the thing that you have to remember is that wealth is built through the investments that you own, not the salary that you make. Even if Mark Zuckerberg made $10 million a year as a CEO of the company, even when the company wasn't making any money, even when he started this company in his college dorm, if he made $10 million a year since the day he started this company, he would have only made $200 million. Now, I'm using the word only very softly, but $200 million is nowhere near the amount of wealth that he has today. And that's because his wealth was built not through his salary, but through his investments. Which brings me to number two, understanding the long-term vision. And this ties in exactly what we were just talking about, where whether you're building it or buying it, your investments take time to grow. If it's your own business, you're going to understand it takes time for your business to grow. If you're investing in assets, stocks, real estate, startups, you've got to understand you need time for your investments to compound and grow. We're not talking about flipping here. We're not talking about trading stocks. The way the wealth is built is through long-term investment ownership. Facebook started back in 2004. So we're talking about two decades of building this company and seeing the value of this company grow. Elon Musk started Tesla back in 2003, more than two decades ago. If you have a short-term horizon where you're only thinking about the next six months or the next five years, you're gonna shoot yourself in the foot because you're gonna miss the opportunity to see the much larger gains over the long-term because over the long-term, you have the ability to see your money grow and the money that your money made grow and time for the company and the investments that you put your money into to compound and build. And number three, there's a difference between pulling all of your eggs in one basket and diversification. Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg were two people that put their eggs in one basket. They believed in what they were doing and they were willing to go all in in what they're doing. Mark Zuckerberg with Facebook, which then became Meta, and then Elon Musk with Tesla and his companies. They didn't really believe in diversification. But if you're one of those people that maybe you don't know exactly what's the perfect company to invest in, or maybe you're not building your own company, 
in that case, it might be better for you to have some diversification. See, not everybody can put all their eggs in one basket. If you're an entrepreneur, sure. Now, yeah, you can go all in with what you're doing, but it's also risk versus reward. And you have to understand, do you want to be the person that's going for everything? Or do you want to kind of mitigate some of the risk and have some of the protection? And there are ways for you to invest your money into the stock market using things like ETFs and index funds and mutual funds to get exposure to a broad basket of stocks that we don't have to find the perfect companies to invest in. For example, there are funds that will give you exposure to the S&P 500. That's a group of the 500 largest companies in the stock market. So now, instead of you trying to find the perfect companies to invest in, which could go to the moon or also go bankrupt, you can invest your money into a fund like SPY. I'm not telling you what to invest in, just giving you an example. SPY is an ETF, it's a type of fund that if you buy one share of this fund, it'll give you exposure to the 500 largest companies in the stock market. Now what you're doing is you're diversifying your money into the 500 largest companies by market capitalization by size in the United States. And this is where now if you want to be more of a passive investor, this can be a great option for you because you can continue to work to make more money. But the reason why you're making more money is so you have more money to invest because real wealth, again, number one, real wealth is built through your investments, not through your salary. But then you have to decide what is the right way for you to invest. Is it stocks? Is it real estate? Is it startups? And then within that, do you want to be diversifying? Do you want to be investing in individual companies? Do you want to be investing in funds? I believe that for 98% of people, you should be investing your money into funds, not individual companies, because it takes a lot of work and time and research and more risk to invest your money in individual companies. And a lot of people are not willing to put in that work or take on that risk, but they just hear people on the internet talking about, oh, this is going to be the next Tesla, buy this stock, without actually understanding what it is that they're investing in. When it comes to building your wealth, find the proven method and understand it's a long-term game Wealth is built through your investments, not just through your salary. Your salary is there to fuel your investments. And when you do it that way, that's how you can become wealthy. But then understand what it is that you're going to invest in. And if you want to go all in, understand that's going to come with a lot more risk. But for 98, if not 99% of people, that's not the way to go. They know how to come up with an investment strategy. They know how to deploy their money. They know how to sell their investments. Well, they have a much higher chance. It's not guaranteed. You're never guaranteed to make money when you invest, but you have a much higher chance of making money. So this is where now you got to understand that risk versus reward ratio and understand what is going to be your investing strategy to get the best returns.